Welcome to our journey through Scotland's genetic history. Today, we're exploring the fascinating migrations and settlements that have shaped Scottish DNA over millennia. Our tale begins 12,000 years ago with the first hunter-gatherers. Over thousands of years, waves of newcomers arrived. Recent genetic studies have revealed also some unexpected connections. For instance, did you know that some Scots share DNA with ancient Siberian tribes? Or that there's a surprising link between Scottish and North African genes? Now, let's begin our genetic journey through Scotland. Our story begins around 12,000 years ago as the last ice age retreated. The first people to inhabit Scotland were Mesolithic hunter-gatherers. These nomadic groups followed the retreating ice sheets, establishing the earliest human presence in the region. While their genetic contribution to modern Scots is relatively small, traces of their DNA still persist in the population. A major shift occurred around 6,000 years ago with the arrival of Neolithic farmers. This wave of migration, originating from the Near East and Anatolia, brought agriculture and new technologies to Scotland. The genetic impact of these farmers was significant and their legacy can be seen in impressive monuments like the Cowanish Stones on Lewis and the Ring of Brodgar in Orkney. Around 4,500 years ago, another pivotal migration occurred, the arrival of the Bell Beaker culture, named after their distinctive bell-shaped pottery. These migrants had a profound impact on the British gene pool, including Scotland. Recent studies suggest that Bell Beaker migrants may have replaced up to 90% of the local Neolithic population's genetic ancestry. The Bronze Age, starting around 4,000 years ago, saw further genetic and cultural changes. This period is associated with the arrival of Celtic languages. The Celts, originating from Central Europe, were diverse tribal societies sharing similar languages, beliefs and cultural practices. In Scotland, Celtic culture was adopted over time, bringing new metalworking technologies, social structures and religious practices. This adoption varied regionally, with coastal and lowland areas experiencing changes earlier than highlands and islands. Celtic influence is evident in the spread of Gaelic language, particularly in the Western Highlands, while Pictish, possibly Brythonic Celtic, persisted in the East until the 10th century AD. The period saw the construction of hill forts, new art styles and changes in burial practices. Recent genetic studies suggest local populations adopted Celtic practices rather than being replaced. This Celtic foundation continued to evolve, interacting with later Roman, Anglo-Saxon, Norse and Norman influences, contributing to Scotland's rich cultural heritage. The Iron Age in Scotland, beginning around 2,800 years ago, is often associated with the Picts, the tribal confederations that Romans called Picti, or Painted People. Genetic studies suggest that the Picts were not significantly different from other Iron Age populations in Britain. Their genetic legacy is likely spread across much of Scotland, particularly in the northeast. The Roman period, spanning from 43 to 410 AD, had a limited genetic impact on Scotland. While the Romans never fully conquered Scotland, they did have a presence south of the Antonine War. Recent studies have found some evidence of Mediterranean DNA in Scotland, particularly in the south, though the Roman genetic contribution is relatively minor compared to other historical migrations. As the Roman Empire fell, 
we entered the Anglo-Saxon period, which lasted from the 5th to the 11th centuries AD. Although the Anglo-Saxons primarily settled in what we now call England, their influence did extend into parts of southern Scotland, particularly in the Lothian region. Finally, we come to the Viking Age, a period that dramatically altered Scotland's genetic landscape. From 793 to 1066 AD, Norse influence left an indelible mark on Scottish DNA, especially in the Northern Isles. Studies have revealed that approximately 25% of Orkney's DNA and 20 to 25% of Shetland's DNA can be traced back to Norwegian sources. This Norse influence is detectable across mainland Scotland as well, though at lower levels, averaging around 4%. The Norman conquest of 1066, while primarily affecting England, also left its mark on Scotland. Many Norman nobles were granted lands in Scotland, particularly during the reign of David I. The genetic contribution of the Normans is most noticeable among the Scottish nobility. In the 12th and 13th centuries, there was a significant migration of Flemish people to Scotland, invited by Scottish kings, particularly David I. These skilled traders and craftsmen settled in various parts of Scotland, contributing to the genetic diversity. Irish influence on Scottish genetics occurred in several waves. The Gaelic Kingdom of Dalriata, which spanned parts of Ulster and Western Scotland in the 5th-6th centuries, represents an early period of significant interaction. Much later, during the 19th century, there was substantial Irish immigration to Scotland during the Industrial Revolution. Now, let's look at some findings from recent genetic studies. The Scotland's DNA project, led by geneticist Dr. Jim Wilson at Edinburgh University, has provided unprecedented insights into Scottish genetic heritage. It analyzed DNA samples from almost 1,000 Scots, providing unprecedented insights into Scottish genetic heritage. One of their studies in 2019 managed to categorize Scotland into six distinct genetic clusters the Borders, the Southwest, the Hebrides, the Northeast, Orkney, and Shetland. This research provides a nuanced view of Scotland's genetic landscape, moving beyond broad generalizations to reveal the intricate patterns of ancestry across different regions. More broadly, this study confirmed a fundamental division in Scottish genetics, with a clear northeast-southwest split roughly aligned with the River Forth. This division is particularly intriguing as it closely mirrors the historical territories of two major ancient Scottish peoples, the Gaels and the Picts. This genetic evidence adds a fascinating layer to our understanding of Scotland's early history, suggesting that these cultural and political boundaries may have had a lasting impact on the genetic makeup of the Scottish people. One of the more surprising findings was the genetic grouping of the Isle of Man with southwestern Scottish individuals. This connection highlights the complex interplay of geography, history, and genetics in shaping population groups. The study also revealed that the Hebrides, that chain of islands off Scotland's west coast, is genetically distinct from the rest of mainland Scotland. In essence, the Hebrides form a genetic island, a population that has remained relatively isolated and developed its own unique genetic signature over time.
Moving on to earlier research, a 2012 study led by the University of Edinburgh made headlines with its discovery that around 1% of Scots are direct descendants of Berber or Tuareg tribesmen from the Sahara. This lineage dates back approximately 5,600 years, pointing to ancient trade connections between North Africa and Scotland. Dr. Wilson explained that this Saharan DNA marker likely spread to Spain during the Moorish conquest, then along the Atlantic coast to France, and finally to Scotland. Genetic studies also have identified Siberian DNA markers in the Scottish population, with a particularly notable presence in the Orkney Islands. This genetic connection is believed to have originated from migrations that occurred approximately 5,000 years ago. The specific genetic markers are associated with the Yamnaya culture, which emerged in the Pontic Caspian steppe region, modern day Ukraine and southern Russia. These Siberian derived genetic markers appear at higher frequencies in Orcadian and some mainland Scottish populations compared to other parts of Britain. While detectable, the overall genetic influence is relatively small, suggesting limited interaction between the Siberian-derived populations and the ancient inhabitants of Scotland. The same study also delved into the genetics of Scottish surnames, with a particular focus on the name Stuart. Intriguingly, they found that 15% of participants with the surname Stuart were direct descendants of the royal line of kings and possessed what the researchers termed royal DNA. Some of the most fascinating findings from genetic studies relate to specific individuals or groups. For instance, the Scotland's DNA project revealed that actor Tom Conti has a genetic link to Napoleon Bonaparte. Both share a Saracen ancestor who settled in Italy around the 10th century before one descendant, Giovanni Buonaparte, moved to Corsica and founded the line that produced Napoleon. The project also identified genetic markers of the Mayatai, a lost tribe whose historic homelands were around Stirling. This tribe, which fought Roman legions in 208 AD, and was mentioned in historical sources until the 8th century, was thought to have vanished. However, DNA analysis has uncovered a high concentration of a distinctive marker clustered around Stirling and the foothills of the Altshills, the homeland of the fierce Mayatai. Scotland's surnames are like a colourful tapestry, each thread representing a different cultural influence that has shaped the nation over centuries. These names tell a fascinating story of invasion, migration and cultural blending that makes Scotland unique. Let's start with the Norman influence. After the Norman conquest, names like Bruce, Fraser and Stuart became common in Scotland. These often have interesting origins. Bruce comes from de Bruce, a family from Bricks in Normandy, while Fraser might come from the French word for strawberry, Frasier. But long before the Normans, Scotland had its own rich Celtic heritage, reflected in Gaelic names. You've probably heard names starting with Mac or Make. This means son of. So MacDonald means son of Donald, and McGregor means son of Gregory. The name Campbell, interestingly, comes from the Gaelic for crooked mouth. Vikings left their mark too. Names like MacIver, Gunn and Sutherland have Norse roots. Sutherland actually means southern land, but that's from the Vikings perspective, looking south from Norway. Anglo-Saxon influences brought names like Armstrong and Douglas. These are often descriptive Armstrong likely referred to someone with strong arms. 
we can't forget the Picts, the ancient people of Scotland. Names like Forbes, Ross and Keith are thought to have Pictish origins, often linked to ancient territories. There's also a strong Irish connection with names like Boyle, Doherty and Kennedy. These often use O, meaning descendant of. O'Neill means descendant of Nile. Scottish surnames can tell us about people's jobs, like McIntyre, son of the carpenter, where they lived, like Dunbar, meaning fought on the point, or even what they looked like, remember Campbell and its crooked mouth meaning. Scotland's genetic history is a complex tapestry of diverse influences, from ancient migrations to more recent historical events. Each study adds to our understanding of the forces that shaped the Scottish people over millennia. What are your thoughts on these findings? Share your perspectives in the comments below. If you enjoyed this exploration of Scottish genetics, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Check out our videos on Irish and Spanish DNA for more fascinating genetic insights. Thanks for joining us on this genetic journey.